says, I'll give this to anybody who needs it. Poor, rich, white or black, free or bond, doesn't matter. I'm going to give it to anybody who needs this. Free. That's wholesome words. These guys pervert it for gifts and power and prestige and respect of persons. They won't preach what needs to be preached. They won't say what needs to be, say, be said. They do it for gifts. That's how it gets perverted. Proverbs 23.30. Here's where the other spirit comes in. They that tarry long at the wine, and they that go to seek mixed wine, look not thou upon the wine when it is red, when it giveth his color in the cup, when it moveth itself aright. At the last it biteth like a serpent, and stingeth like an adder. Thine eyes shall behold strange women, and thine heart shall utter perverse things. They have a different spirit on them. Therefore, they're going to utter a perverted works or performance-based gospel. Proverbs 28, 18, Whoso walketh uprightly shall be saved, but he that is perverse in his ways shall fall at once. Proverbs 31, 4, It is not for kings, O Lemuel, it is not for kings to drink wine, nor for princes strong drink, lest they drink and forget the law and pervert the judgment of any of the fl afflicted. Do you think that those people who are slain in the spirit, running around, acting like drunk people. Do you think they're really giving you the real gospel? They're not. They're giving you a gospel that demands money and works and performances. Act like a drunk now and you can show everybody you're saved. They, have, they are perverted by a drunken spirit and hence they preach a perverted gospel. Are, are you saying, Pastor Mike, these guys aren't Christian? I mean, how can you judge your salvation? I'm not judging anybody's salvation. I'm telling you that if they have it, see, this is real simple. If they have a drunken spirit on them, they don't have the right gospel. It's a perverted one. It's a gospel that says, like Joyce Myers you, says, that you must say the right words. You must perform these. You, I'll get into these words here. Joel Osteen's the same way. If you say these words with enough faith, if you, if, you, if you clear and empty your mind of every negative thought and everything in the world that will inhibit that, then the faith force will be... That's witchcraft. We'll get into that. But they operate under a, under a false, drunken spirit, and they have hence perverted the gospel. These people are not preaching the real gospel of a sober mind. They're not. Different gospel. Isaiah 30, verse 12, Wherefore thus saith the Holy One of Israel, because ye despise this word, and trust in oppression and perverseness, and stay thereon. Therefore this iniquity shall be to you as a breach ready to fall, swelling out in a high wall, whose breaking cometh suddenly at an instant. When they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as travail upon a woman with child. And you know what they've done? They despise this word. And so a picture of a perverted gospel is a gospel that's not based solely on the words of this book. It is based partially here, but partially on something else outside of that. I'll give you examples as we move on. That's a perverted gospel. See, it it's sounds like the real gospel. It's not. Jeremiah 23, 36, And the burden of the Lord shall ye mention no more, for every man's word shall be his burden. For ye have perverted the words of the living God, of the Lord of hosts, of our God. Acts chapter 13, 10, And said, O full of all subtlety and all mischief, thou child of the devil, thou enemy of all righteousness, wilt thou not cease to pervert the right ways of the Lord? Acts 20, verse 30, Also of your own selves shall men arise, speaking perverse things, to draw away disciples after them. You see it? You see it? You see, these guys, not only do they like money, they like crowds. They like big churches, big meetings. They judge the, how right they think they are by how many people are falling for it. Whereas the real Jesus just says, Come unto me, all you that labor and heavy laden, not to the preachers and the popes and the evangelists and the Christian leaders, not to, not to all those. Come unto me, and I will give you rest. It's a difference. Mm, what a difference. Now, here's uh, we're going to get into some specifics here. We've dealt with the perverseness. They pervert. When, let me. I got this coming up, and I'm going to give you an example here. Okay. 
don't show how they, they pervert the words and change the gospel. John 3.16 in the authorized Bible, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, very important, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. All these, all these false Bibles, okay, well, this one's called the book, how original. They all have perverted words in them, okay, every one of them. Um, John 3.16 in the book. I think, uh, what version is this? The book. The book. The book. It is a New Living Translation. John 3.16 For God so loved the world that he gave his only son. Only begotten son. You see, this gospel here tells you that God only has one son. It's not true. He only has one begotten son. Those who fall after him and are in Christ, and Christ is in us, and he is in God, then we become sons of God with him, hence joint heirs with Jesus. And it's interesting, it makes some people mad, that if Jesus inherits all things and we are all in him together, equal, then we inherit all all things. That's what the Bible says. All things. A perverted gospel says, well, th these people aren't going to get all the rewards that these people up here are going to get. That's perverted. The Bible doesn't say that. The real gospel says that here's the only begotten Son. We are adopted into Him we are in him and he is in us and he, since he inherits all things we inherit all things they perverted the words changed the meaning now back to Galatians Paul said in Galatians uh, 1.8 but though we are an angel from heaven you probably know where I'm going with this preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you let him be accursed as we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that ye have received, let him be accursed. And so we're gonna, let's, let's look at, uh, where is it here? Ah, the Book of Moron, Mormon, Mormon, Book of Mormon, okay? Another gospel. It's another testament. It's, a, it's another contract. I'll talk, to about, I'll, I'll talk to you a little bit about contracts here in a little bit, all right? Probably not today. But another testament of Jesus Christ. Where did it come from? Where did it come from? An angel from heaven. The angel Moron I. Mor Morani. Mor Moroni. That's who it is. The angel Moron I came down from heaven and said, Got a secret book. Hasn't been, hasn't been made public yet. God kept it hidden, secret. And so we want you to go and put on these special Google goggles and look at these characters that no one's ever seen before called reformed hieroglyphics or something like that translate it by yourself without anybody else knowing it that's going to be the real gospel the one that has not been made public based upon a book that no one has ever seen before or since Joe Smith angel from heaven here is what, let me get this back out. Here is what this other gospel from an angel from heaven says about how you can inherit eternal life. I'll give you an example of it. it look, this is what it looks like. This is from 2 Nephi. Uh, there is 1 uh, Nephi, 2 Nephi, and Great Nephi, I think. For we labor diligently to write, to persuade our children, and also our brethren to believe in Christ, and to be reconciled to God, for we know that it is by grace that we are saved after all we can do. Two Gospels here. Do. Done. This Gospel, every work, including every Old Testament law, was done by Christ. Done. 
That's why he said it is finished. He didn't say, we're working on it. Help me out here. He said, it's finished. It's done. It's accomplished. It's over with. The works are done. So do you believe in do or done? And so here is Joe Smith. Joe Smith, boy, these guys, they love putting the two boys on bicycles with white shirts and ties. And they send them out, and they're just waiting to meet some of these Baptists and Presbyterians. And they try to hook them into a new gospel, different one. Not just the Baptists and Presbyterians, all the people, okay? And so their, their gospel is do. After you have done everything that you can do, then God gives you grace. That is not what this says. This actually teaches, this is what I came to the conclusion of. Mike Hoggard can't do. Can't. And what this also means is they set a standard then for what must be done. And if you can't do all that they say to do, they say you cannot be saved. And there are people, I know them, and I'm on your side. There are people who are like me. They've tried to do, and they can't. Some people I know can't do very much at all. My brother-in-law, I've known him for years, if there was a law of God, he broke it. Twice. Repeatedly. Spent his whole life that way. And then God got a hold of him just weeks before he died. And he was saved. And he never did a thing. And he was saved. The young man here that preaches, Brady Crumb, his dad. His dad, he's a good guy. He was a sinner. Rotten, filthy sinner. Five minutes before the doctor came into his room telling him he had cancer, he asked Jesus to live in his heart and save him. I was there. The next day he says, you know, I just feel like there's somebody living on the inside of me. He never did a thing, and he was saved. He's in heaven right now. So is my brother-in-law. That's the God I'm going to serve. The God who would take the people that I loved, like my dad, my brother-in-law, Keith Crump, and take them who have never done and save them. That's the God. I'm, I'm on his side. This God, mm -mm, don't like him. I hate him. After you do all you can do, then God's going to give you grace. That's a lie. And it came from an angel. Mitt Romney, Glenn Beck, and the entire Mormon church is cursed. Cursed with a false gospel. I don't care if you like what they said. I don't care if you voted for them. They're cursed. False gospel. Here's some other quotes from Mormon doctrine about how you get saved, quote unquote. The 13th president of the Moron, uh, Mormon church, Ezra Taft Benson said, what is meant by after all we can do? After all we can do includes extending our best effort. After all we can do includes living his commandments. After all we can do includes loving our fellow men and praying for those who, re who regard us as their adversary. After all we can do means clothing the naked, feeding the hungry, visiting the sick, and giving succor to those who stand in need of our succor. This is from Mosiah 4.15. Remembering that we do unto one of the least of God's children, we do unto him. After